Okay, so welcome back to this part two in our series, our playlist, where we're going to show you how to configure what you see here, which is a system including what we call a server, which is our desktop computer, and I've also got an Arduino with built-in Wi-Fi, and I've got a Raspberry Pi, and we're going to set up a system and write the code for these three devices so that we can communicate via Wi-Fi. Now, I encourage you to look at the previous videos. We did a tutorial on Wi-Fi and how it works. It's really important you understand that. And we also did a video previously on this uh, very inexpensive $10 Arduino that has a built-in Wi-Fi chip. And it allows you to not only program the Arduino, but also communicate over Wi-Fi. So I encourage you to look at that. And in the future videos, we're going to write the code for the what you see here, Raspberry Pi, and also for the Arduino. But in this video, we're going to write the c -sharp Windows Forms .NET Framework code for this server. And I encourage you to look at the previous videos where we talked about how the, what TCP is, what IP is, what port is, and all the stuff you need, the basics, uh, to understand how this is going to work. So we're going to write the c -sharp code to be able to communicate with these devices and to connect with the devices. So in the previous video, we came up with these basic steps that we're going to need to convert the code in this video. And this is how we're going to program this TCP desktop server. We're going to assume it's already connected to Wi-Fi. We're going to start listening for clients on port 49002. We talked about this in previous video. Uh, if any tr clients try to connect, we're going to grab them, connect with them, and set up what's called a stream. And then we're going to write a simple loop that sends a command to the client, reads whatever response it sends, and then waits, and then does the loop over and over again. So this is going to be the basic structure of what we're going to write in c -sharp code in this video. So let's go and look at the very simple solution in c -sharp Windows Forms Visual Studio. So here is our solution, and you can see it's very simple. I've got a blank Form 1, and I've added a text box, a multi-line text box, and we've done videos on how to do that. It's very simple. Um, I've also added three buttons. I've got a Start button that's going to start the process of waiting for clients and then connecting to the clients and communicating, and then a Pause button that's going to pause that process, and then a simple Exit button. All right, so... Basically, you just need a text box and three buttons, and to click, if you double click on each of these buttons, you're going to get the event handlers that we're going to show you. To get to the code, you just select the form, hit F7, and here is the code that we're going to be using. And you can see it's very straightforward. Um, we've got our three event handlers for the start button, the exit button, and the pause button, and those are very simple. We've got our using statements, we've got a couple variables up here our Form 1 initialized component, and really the thing that does all the work is this method called listener. And as we said before, this is going to listen to see if there's any clients that want to connect, and when it finds a client, it's going to connect to it and start talking and send a command, says, hey, give me some data, and the client hopefully will respond, and it will give us the data we've been requesting, and we'll keep doing that in a loop. So let's just run this and see what happens. So I'm going to press the Start button, and here is our Form 1. And I'm going to hit the Start button, and it's going to say, Starting TCP Listener and Accepting Clients on Port 49002. So now it's just going through a continuous loop waiting for someone to connect with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my Raspberry Pi that I've already written the code for as a client, and I'm going to run it, and you can see immediately how it connects, receives a command, and then sends a response. So now you can see it is sending a command. We're using an L to say, hey, log the data to me. The client is responding with an OK. And we're also measuring the round trip time that it takes to um, connect and send a command and receive a response. You can see it's around six milliseconds. So this is all it's going to do. It's going to send, it's going to connect, send a command, get a response, and measure the round trip time. So let's take a look at this and see what it's doing. So the first thing we've got is we've got some using statements. We're going to use using system, system.net, and then .net sockets. And we're going to use that so that we can connect to an IP address and a port, and that's called a socket. And we're using system.txt, system.threading. We're going to see that we're going to 
thread part of this so that we can still use the UI and then systemwindows.forms. We have our public partial class form one and all we're going to do is add two parameters here, two variables. One is a static int and that is defining the TCP port. We talked about that in the previous video and randomly we we're going to choose port 49002. We also have a bool called com continue and we're defaulting that to true. Basically, that's going to allow us to pause if we want to pause the communication hitting this pause button. The pause button will just change the defaults, otherwise it will just keep going through the loop. So we have our form one initialized component. We have the important listener. You can see it's async and we'll talk about that later. That's going to allow us to make this part of this threaded so we can still use the UI. And then we've got the three event handlers for the buttons. The button exit is simple, application exit. The start button is going to start all of this going. And you can see all it does is it calls this listener method. So very, very simple. And the pause method is just going to say com continue equals false, which means stop doing this. And we'll see in the listener method that it's checking to see com continue. The real important part of this is this listener method. So here is the listener method. You can see it's just one big try and catch. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to give some data, some feedback to the text box. And we've got a lot of that in here just to give us some feedback to know what's going on. And it's going to say text box one dot append text. We're starting the TCP listener. All right. And then we have to set the IP address as the server's address and set the port to 49002. Very basic. You got to figure out the IP address and the port you want to connect on. We're going to use the system.net.sockets TCP listener. And that's going to allow us to set up the listening on the IP address and that TCP port. Now we're going to set it up using IP address.any. So no matter what IP address uh, is called over this port 49002, it's going to accept it. That'll just make it a little bit easier. So we're going to call it server and that's the TCP listener server. We're going to instantiate a new TCP listener with any IP address and this port 49002. And then we're going to start, do a server.start. Then we're going to say in the append text, accepting clients on port and then convert that TCP port to string. And that will say we're accepting clients on port 49002. So now we're just sitting here waiting for this to happen. And if a connection exists, the server will accept it. Now, here is we're going to define a client called TCP client, and we're going to do an await. And that's why we have this async. We're going to do an await so that we can wait until we accept a TCP client. In other words, a TCP client like our Arduino starts up and says, I'm here. We're going to wait for that to happen and we're going to do it asynchronously so we can still use the UI. So we now we've got a client and we're awaiting and when this is done at this point, a remote client has been accepted and we're going to get the remote client IP address and we're going to print it out. So we're going to define a string called client IP and we're going to use this client TCP client, which we've already defined and we're going to get the client for that client and we're going to look at the remote endpoint which is the IP address of that client convert it to string and now we've got the client IP address as a string and the text box is going to say client connected from IP address and then tell us the IP address and then we're going to say we're instantiating a network stream we talked before if we want to communicate with the device as you know, when you want to communicate with a file or USB or whatever, we're setting up a stream. This is going to be called a network stream. And we're going to instantiate a network stream. So network stream, we're calling NS. And that is client.getStream. So it's going to get the stream and allow us to communicate with it. Now we're going to, this is going to be one big while loop that goes through. This is our loop that's going to go through um, send a command, get the data and wait, and then go back through this loop. 
but it's only going to do it while the client is connected. We're using the client and we're using dot connected property. If it's connected and that com continue boolean is true, we haven't hit the pause button. While this is true, we're going to send the data, we're going to send the command, get the response, and then wait. And we're also going to measure the round trip time. A lot of this is just measuring round trip time. And then at the end of it, we're going to do a thread.sleep for one second. Now, ideally, we'll make this asynchronous in the future, but right now we're going to make it real simple and just do a thread.sleep. So the while loop, while the client is connected and we're saying do the continue the com, we're going to first figure out how to convert our command character. We're going to use an L, a capital L. We have to convert that into a byte array that we can send. So in order to get that, we're going to make a byte array. We're call it, going to call it write buffer, and it's only going to have one character. And we're going to convert this L. It's going to convert it to a byte array, and it's going to use ASCII encoding and give us write buffer. And it will give us the L in a um, ASCII byte array. And then we're going to start the time, the round trip timer. We're going to call it date time start is date time now. Now I've done videos before on C sharp date time. I encourage you to take a look at that, but it's really straightforward. So we're going to say start is the starting time. And then we are going to write that code, which is a, an L, capital L, or an ASCII 76 to the client. And we're going to use ns.write. And that's network stream, ns.write. And we're going to write the write buffer and we're going to have zero offset, and we're going to have the size of that write buffer. So we're, we have written it, and then we're going to say text box one, we sent L to client, and now we are waiting for the response. And the messages are going to arrive as a byte array. So we're going to say the response message is a byte array, and we're instantiating as a new byte array of four characters. And then we're going to read. We're going to read the message sent by the client using the network stream object, and that is ns.read, and then we've got the buffer of the message coming in, we've got an offset, and we've got a size, message.length. And now that we have received this, we're going to do a end time, date time now, date time end equals date time now, and then the time span is the difference between the end and start, and that's to tell us how many milliseconds it took from when we sent the command to when we received the um, response. And now all we're going to do is just give some feedback to the user in the text box. We're going to say, what's the client response? In our case, it's just going to be an OK. We're going to program into that into the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to say encoding.default get string message. And that is going to convert that, that message uh, byte array to a string and put it in the text box. And here we're just going to say the round trip time is ts.total milliseconds to string. And we're going to use a floating one to give it just uh, one decimal point, And that's in milliseconds. And then we're going to append the text. And that's basically it. We have basically sent a command, received a response. And now all we have to do is sleep for, in our case, we're going to choose one second or a thousand milliseconds and wait and do it again. Now, one of the problems with thread.sleep is that it's going to occupy the UI and it's going to lock it up for that every second. So in future um, optimization, we're going to want to make this asynchronous. But for simplicity, I just did a thread.sleep. And that's about it. Um, this is a while. And then this whole thing in this method is a try catch. And the catch is just going to say, as we saw before, text box one, client is disconnected if it tries to connect and can't. And then it's going to return. So really very straightforward, very simple um, to, you know, you got to set up a TCP listener. You got to define the client and you wait for the client. And then you set up the network stream and you can go ahead and do your loop. So that's about it for this one. Pretty straightforward. Now what we have to do is go to the Raspberry Pi and then go to the Arduino and set up the code that will communicate, and we should be all set. 
So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.